Welcome. In this video, I am going to show you how to integrate ClickSense visualizations into your application and web page. We will also talk about how to use the ClickSense API to implement communication between embedded objects and your application. I will also introduce you to the Click Development Hub, along with different integration strategies and techniques. We use mashups to embed ClickSense charts into the user interface or third-party applications. A mashup is a combination of two content sources presented as one user interface. As you see in this example, we combine a distributor portal with APIs and a dashboard from Click. Portal content is served by portal servers. ClickSense objects are served by ClickSense servers and integration occurs on the user interface level. To start building integration, you need to have already developed a ClickSense application since you can reuse every chart that you have created. You can also generate charts on the fly and pull data from the Click Engine, for example, fields, dimensions, and measures, so you can dynamically build non-Click objects to present your data. Mashups can be implemented with the Click Dev Hub, which is easy to use with a graphical environment that combines a few tools into a single interface. You can access Dev Hub from the menu in ClickSense, or you can access it by typing the following URL in your web browser, localhost colon 4848 forward slash dev dash hub. This is only if you are working with ClickSense Desktop, so in this case, make sure that ClickSense Desktop is running in the background. On a server environment, use your server address forward slash dev dash hub. No dev hub installation is needed. It's included in the standard ClickSense installation package and is already installed in your ClickSense environment. If you already have your application or web page developed, you can still use your preferred development environment. So in this case, you can start with DevHub to quickly generate code, such as click connection definition and object definition, and then you can copy this into your environment using, for example, Notepad++. In most cases, you can do 30% of the work in DevHub, so you generate the most important pieces of code, which can then be moved into your preferred environment. To start mashup development, simply navigate to the mashup editor and choose Create New Project from the menu. Name your mashup and select a template. There are a few out-of-the-box templates to speed up development. Let us select a basic single mashup to create our first mashup. DevHub creates a set of files, including an HTML file with page layout and placeholders for click objects, JavaScript files with page logic, connection details, and CSS, and other resource files. There is also a preview window where we can quickly see the result of our development. When starting, you have to select which click application upon which you will base your mashup. I will choose the Help Desk Management application. This application is available as a demo app in ClickSense. A list of sheets and charts appears on the left-hand side menu. In the preview, I can drag and drop the charts to my web page. So let's drag and drop three KPI objects and one chart. Then I can view my mashup in a web browser. As you can see, my charts work exactly the same as they do in ClickSense. I am able to make a selection and the other charts update according to my selection. I can also clear my selection using the Clear button.
Now let's take a look at the HTML and JavaScript files. When I select an application from the drop-down menu, DevHub automatically adds in the JavaScript code that is needed to open this application. We can see this piece of code here. In this line, the function uses the application name or ID and the connection definition. This is using the Click Application API. To display charts, we use divs, and there are some empty divs in the template that is selected. If I drag and drop a chart into my web page, the Dev Hub modifies the divs, applies the QV object class, and adds lines of JavaScript code to fill out this div. We can see this line right here. The click API function getObject puts the chart into a div, the div ID, the click chart, and click object ID. In a template, I use the click application API to clear the selections, apply bookmarks, or to modify go back and go forward with my selection. This is very easy. I only have to call the proper API function, and we see this here in the JavaScript. So DevHub generates code which you can simply copy and paste to your web page or application. This really speeds up integration development. Here is an example of a mashup. As you can see, I modified the HTML file and added a logo to the navigation bar and some click filters on top of the page layout. Because I used a responsive template, my mashup is responsive as well. So in my mashup, the user experience is the same on mobile devices and tablets as it is in the ClickSense client. The user can filter data and do analysis in the exact same way as in ClickSense. If you take a closer look on the page, there are two non-click objects, buttons to select what year at which we are looking, and a table presenting the number of cases per department. To create these, I used two options in the Dev Hub, which are List and Hypercubes. Using List, I can get values from a dimension, fields, or measures, and use them in my mashup. For example, to create a drop-down list or custom filters. Let us take a look at the mashup. Here I have a list of years. Year is a dimension in this application, and basically I read this list of years and dynamically created buttons. The buttons are used to filter data in my mashup. To create a list, I have a list builder, and this allows me to select the dimension, which is year. Then I have to specify the callback function, and if I press Add, DevHub generates the corresponding JavaScript code in the JavaScript file. I will get a JSON object from Click with a structure like this, and DevHub also generated the callback function. In my sample mashup, I created a div with button group, and in a callback function, I processed the JSON object and created these buttons as you can see here, the definition of my callback function. I am getting this object. Process the object, and for each record in the object, I dynamically create the buttons. 
I also implemented an on-click event on the buttons. Using the API, the click even makes a selection on the field year. The hypercube is a similar concept, but with a hypercube I can get a set of values, dimensions, measures, or fields. I have a few of them in one hypercube. This is very useful if, for example, I want to present data in a non-click visualization object. In my example, I have department as a dimension, total cases as a measure, and I present this in a table that does not come from click. The table is an HTML and bootstrap table. To create hypercubes, I use a hypercube builder. Here I can select department as a dimension and total cases as a measure. I need to specify the callback function and if I press add, DevHub generates JavaScript code with a JSON structure as seen here and DevHub also generates the callback function to process and this hypercube. In this hypercube, I process the structure and for each record of this structure, I generate a row of the table. As you can see, data is presented in a bootstrap table and this table updates dynamically. The list of records changes if I make any selection or if I use a filter. For example, if I make a selection in departments, you can see that the table updates with only the selected departments. Here I have a nice example of mashups presenting ClickSense data on a non-click object. This is a loan officer performance tracker. The data comes from Click, but this object is a non-click object developed by one of our partners. Another great example is a flight map. Again, data is pulled from the click engine, and here the data is presented on a map which is not a click map, but a third party product. Now let's take a look at the anatomy of a mashup. A basic mashup project in DevHub requires a minimum of four files, an HTML file which controls the page layout, a JavaScript file which controls the page behavior and logic, a QEXT file which has the click extensions details, and lastly a WBL file which is the manifest list of the project files. This is an example of a QEXT file. There are parameters such as the project type, the project name, what version of ClickSense is used, keywords, and some other parameters. Here you can see the WBL file, containing the list of files included in the project. It is very important to be aware of the limitations using the list technique. The most important ones are, the user working with mashups connects to the ClickSense server, so this requires authentication and consumes a click license. Second is the responsive design support. As you know, ClickSense charts are responsive, so if you embed charts in your application, the charts themselves are responsive, but you have to take care of the responsive design on your web page. The third limitation is that mashups display click charts, and they require a modern browser and WebSocket communication support. So always check if your applications can work in such an environment. You can get more information on the Click Online Help for Developers. Just navigate to help.click.com and click on ClickSense Developers. There is a lot of information on how to embed ClickSense charts and how to develop mashups. That concludes this video. 
Thanks for watching.